All right, what's up everybody? Uh, today we're gonna go over mirrors and lenses. Uh, they're gonna function pretty similarly as we sort of get into them, but we of course have a, a couple of topics that are kind of offshoots from each of them. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is plane mirrors. Um, plane mirrors essentially just present a geometry uh, problem. So the idea here is you have, you know, let's say you have a person who's trying to see themselves in the mirror. And uh, how big of a mirror would you need for this person to be able to see their full body? This is a common question that you'll see a lot. Do you need a, a mirror that is the height of the person? So if it's a six foot tall person, you need a six foot mirror? Well, because of the way that light bounces off of a mirror, uh, you actually only need a mirror that is half the size of the person. The reason why is uh, the light rays from their feet will hit the mirror at the bottom of the mirror and then travel back to their eyes. And so essentially they cover you know, half the height of the person on the way to the mirror, and then they cover the other half as they bounce back to the eyeball. All right, so uh, you're gonna appear the same size in a flat mirror, um, and uh, so there's, it's usually just a matter of a geometry problem. And the one that you're gonna be responsible for uh, this week is, uh, it's a sort of a top-down situation where you have a mirror up against a wall, and Here's sort of your wall, and then there's like another wall here. And you've got uh, a person, a security guard. Okay, so they call it security guard, and it's S. And the security guard is, let's see, let's get our mirror in here as well. So your mirror is gonna have a width of D, and the security guard is that same distance D to the right of the mirror, and that same distance D from the wall in front of him. And then he's trying to get a, a glimpse at this, I say a burglar over here on the other side. And the burglar is walking directly toward the center of the mirror. And the question is, when will the security guard see the burglar? Okay, so to take a step back, you can think of uh, sort of the right extreme here of the mirror, and they need the, the burglar to show up uh, there, right? That's going to be where they can see the furthest down the corridor would be right here and over here they'd see you know some some really far off distance so uh how close does the burglar need to be to the mirror well if the burglar were on this side right here like directly underneath the left side of the mirror then the security guard would see him when he's the same distance away right because it, it's uh going to be um, I don't, i'm trying to avoid saying like a mirror image but uh it, essentially you know uh he catch a glimpse of him when the light rays can travel and bounce off and get to the security guard. Since the burglar is only at the middle of that mirror, though, uh, the security guard won't catch a glimpse of him until he gets to, you know, half of the distance as well. So the idea here is that the image is going to show up um, when this distance here matches up with this distance right here, essentially. And... Uh, yeah, it's just a, a matter of a geometry problem. So it would be sort of, you'd have half the distance covered here that you do over here because there's half the distance here that there's over here. That's it. Um, and that's sort of your only plain mirror problem. And you, you might see one on the, an exam um, and you know maybe it would be the one about the height or something like that. There's not a whole lot to do with plain mirrors. We do have uh, a, a different type of mirror is called a spherical mirror. And the way that a spherical mirror works, this is like the one on the, um, what are the name of the mirrors on the outside of the car? I, don't, I can't remember what the name of those are for some reason. Uh, but those are spherical mirrors. That's why they have that little warning that says uh, objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear. And it's because you get a little bit of a distorted image for the mirror. So uh, we have a couple equations. This first equation we're gonna use for both spherical mirrors and uh, spherical lenses. Um, I, I also want to mention that just because it's spherical doesn't mean it actually has to be a complete sphere. That just means that it's sort of shaped, um, a, a curved. Okay, so we have two different types of spherical mirrors. We have a uh, convex and a concave. Oops. Convex versus concave. And just to give you a little sketch of what each of these looks like, a convex mirror is going to bulge outward, so you'd have something like this as the surface that you're looking in. Oops, get that cleared up. So you'd have like, that would be your convex mirror, and you would be looking from, uh, you know, this direction. Let's see if we can draw an eyeball here. Okay, 
a little bit of a wide eyeball, but there you go. So you're looking at the mirror uh, from the left side, and uh, yeah, and so this is convex because it bulges outward. And what we need to know for convex mirrors is we have this thing called a focal length that tells you how curved the mirror is. And so for a convex mirror, um, you will have a positive focal length. Um, Uh, rather, sorry, a, a negative focal length. So the the reason why the negative uh, why the focal length is negative for a convex mirror is because this mirror is shaped around a point that is over here, right? If you were to to like complete this sphere, that sphere would be on the opposite side of the mirror. Light doesn't actually hit this point, so uh, we say that that is a, a negative focal length. We'll talk a little bit more about the implications there in a second. But just for right now, we just need to know the difference between convex and concave. A concave mirror would be shaped sort of the opposite. And again, you're looking at it from this direction over here. And uh, this is going to have a positive focal length. And that is because uh, this sphere is centered around a point where the light is actually passing through. So the light is actually over here in this case. And so that gives you a positive focal length. Okay. So let's talk about, we talk about a few different things. First thing that I want to define is something called the radius of curvature. So your radius of curvature um, is just twice the focal length. That's going to be one equation that you're going to want to use. Um, the other equation, this is sort of your basic equation that relates to the object that you place in front of the mirror and the image that is produced. And that's 1 over P plus 1 over I is equal to 1 over f. So we, as I just mentioned, you'll have a focal length that just tells you how curved the mirror is. And then you can place an object at some distance from it, and you will get an image distance out. So we covered how we'll, you'll have a uh, positive focal length for a uh, concave mirror and a negative focal length for a convex mirror. Let's talk about the other, and then we have our, our radius of curvature equation, which I'll just write that again. You're just, your radius is just two times the focal length, and that's just the radius of the sphere that, that the mirror is sort of carved out of. And um, what other equations do we want? Yeah, so from this, um, you'll get an image distance out. Generally, the way it works is you'll plug in your focal length, you'll place an object at some distance, you'll get an image distance. So if I get a positive image distance, um, what that is telling me is that the image is formed on the same side, And um, it's also going to tell you that uh, you have a real image and that it is inverted as well. Real image and inverted. And then if you are, oops, if you're on the opposite side, or I should say if you get a, a negative sign, then you would be on the opposite side. And here we're saying the image is formed on the opposite side from where the object is. Um, and this is going to be a virtual image. And it will be upright. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what a real versus virtual is and what inverted versus upright is. So uh, a real image is one that can be essentially that can be like projected. So if you look at a projector, uh, your projector is creating a real image. And what that means is that everyone sitting in a room, even if they're looking at it from a different angle, is seeing the same image. A virtual image, on the other hand, depends on the perspective of the viewer. So this is like your common bathroom mirrors, even though it's a plane mirror, it's not spherical. But in that case, you're seeing a virtual image because uh, as you move around, that image is going to move and change as well. Um, and then whether it's inverted or upright is actually just a matter of something called the magnification. And your magnification is just negative i over p. And this is magnification in the sense that you're sort of used to it. Does, does the object get bigger or smaller? So if, if this ratio is bigger than one, you get a bigger image. If the ratio is less than one, you get a smaller image. The one thing that we add here is the negative sign, and that negative sign corresponds to whether you are inverted or upright. However, these three will always uh, work in tandem for mirrors, and we're going to change one of them when we get to spherical lenses. Um, cool, and that's sort of, that's actually, I guess, uh, the list of equations. Um, these equations usually don't give people too much trouble. You just want to make sure that you have them all uh, handy. Uh, this is, again, for spherical mirrors. Um, for lenses, the one note that I'll make is that 
uh, the same side versus opposite side uh, is going to flip. So uh, this is for mirrors. I'm trying to think of how to write this. Uh, I guess I'll just write over here that this these count for mirrors. And then for, make a little note over here, that for lenses, spherical lenses, um, you switch the same side versus opposite side. So switch the same versus opposite. And then there you go, at least you have a, let me move my head. But uh, now you have a, a list of, you know, uh, a full list of notes here and, and you can tackle any spherical mirror problem or any spherical lens problem. Um, and yeah, I guess that's that's sort of the, the that's a very quick sort of explanation of the, the foundation of uh, this homework. You're gonna have a few problems where you're just calculating, uh, say an image distance, then also calculating a magnification. And they may ask you for your, your radius of curvature as well. Um, and then you need to interpret the sign that you get on your image and the sign that you get in your magnification. And so long as you can do that, you'll be able to get through those problems. And then we have a few offshoot uh, sort of concepts. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those real quick. This will be a pretty short video. Um, so one that we have is something called a spherical re spherical refracting surface. And for the spherical re refracting surface, we just have essentially you have two radiuses of convergence for a spherical refracting surface. Um, or, uh, and, and thus you have two different focal lengths, um, or not rather, not, not uh, radius and focal length, but two different uh, indices. So this could be, um, I'm trying to think of an example of a spherical refracting surface. Uh, if you've ever seen like a, a sphere of glass or something like that, um, and maybe the, the glass is filled with water, um, there you have two different indices. So that's sort of that, that is sort of the idea. And we just change our equation, the one over P plus one over I equals one over F. We just modify it a little bit and you'll know that you're doing these problems because it'll always have two indices of refraction. And this is the only problem where you have indices of refraction that have to do with lenses. So you just need to know that you have this equation down, which is that the first index N1 over P plus the second index N2 over I uh, is equal to N2 minus N1. And then rather than being over the focal length here, we're going to be over the radius of convergence. So that will change as well. Um, and yeah, so that is for, for this, this equation would reduce down if you had an index of air maybe, but I'm not even going to go down that path. The point is uh, that you just modify the equation and just as we did before, you will find an image distance generally. You'll, you'll plug in a, an object distance, find an image distance, um, or uh, maybe they'll ask you to sort of back out and, and calculate a different one. And then you interpret your image distance just as we did before for real versus virtual, uh, same side versus opposite side, and inverted versus upright. So this, is, this carries over from mirrors, the same set of rules uh, will carry over to spherical refracting surfaces. Um, all right, and then uh, talked about lenses, talked about mirrors, and how to interpret everything there. Um, one more topic I want to talk about is a multi-lens system. So a telescope or a microscope would be a multi-lens system. You essentially have uh, two sort of spherical lenses, and they can be, uh, for lenses, we uh, call them converging versus diverging. So uh, the converging lens, I, mean, I need to make a note of that on its own. So the, uh, for lenses, we have a positive focal length for a converging lens. and a negative focal length for what's called a diverging. So that's just some vocabulary that you need to, uh, to know. And then um, what are we actually going to do with lenses? Well, as I mentioned, you're still gonna use your one over P plus one over I equals one over F. And you would still get a positive or negative image distance. And positive versus negative, 
if it's positive, it's going to be a real image. If it's negative, it's going to be virtual for the image distance. And, um, and that will also carry over to the magnification equation. The only difference, of course, with lenses, as I mentioned, but just to reiterate this, is that a lens makes a real image on the opposite side, whereas a mirror will make a real image on the same side. So that's the only thing that will change um, as far as your interpretation of the signs on your uh, image distance and magnification. All right, so let's talk about then a two lens system. So for a two lens system, what's gonna happen is your first lens will create an image. So you could have like, you know, a guy over here. The first lens will create the image and the image that the first lens creates can be on the same side as the guy. It could be a virtual upright image on the same side. It could be a real um, inverted image on the opposite side, but let's go ahead and draw a little image. I'm gonna make him squiggly so we know that this is the image person. That's why it's shaky like that. So this is your image from lens one. So you have some image distance I1 that you'll solve for, doing one over P plus one over I equals one over F. And what you need to do is that image from the first lens is going to become the object for the second lens. And so this will be our object distance P2. And of course your lenses will be separated by some distance and you'll be given that distance. That's why you, you, know, you have a tube in a telescope. Um, all right, so the only thing we need to know then is how, how do we take the image distance from lens one, turn it into an object distance for lens two. Um, there's just a, a, a concrete relationship. You can use this every time. You can end up with images in weird locations and stuff. Like you could end up with the image from lens one on the opposite side of lens two, right? That would be kind of a weird situation, but you can still use this equation. It will not uh, do you any wrong. And it's that P2 is equal to D the lens separation uh, minus I1. That's how you take image distance one and turn it into the object distance for lens two. Um, and then the other thing that they may ask you to do is a magnification. If you need to find a magnification for this entire system, then your total magnification is just gonna be the multi uh, multiplicative, uh, the, the product of uh, M1 and M2. So you just do an M1, which is again, negative I, each of these are gonna be a negative I over P. And so you'll do negative I1 over P1 times negative I2 over P2 essentially. And that will give you the total magnification of the system. And then you can um, also determine um, which side you end up on. Just make sure you have the correct focal lengths. Um, and you can, end up, you can determine which side you end up on again by just interpreting the uh, final image distance. If your final image distance is positive, you'll be on the opposite side. If your final image distance is negative, you'll be on the same side. And again, negative image distance corresponds to a virtual image, positive corresponds to a real, and, uh, and your magnification will tell you if it's inverted or not. So you'll just calculate a total magnification, and that's how you'll figure out if it's inverted or not. All right, and then one other topic that we wanna go over is uh, corrective lenses, so like glasses. Um, and uh, for uh, glasses, if you are trying to correct farsightedness, so for farsightedness, um, or that's actually, we'll do, just do Nearsightedness. So for nearsightedness, which is uh, you cannot see far away, farsightedness is reading glasses. Um, so nearsightedness, uh, you will typically be asked to do you know one over p plus one over i equals one over f. That equation again is sort of being carried through this entire chapter. Um, but what's going to change is when you are trying to correct nearsightedness is you're trying to enable the person to see objects that are very far away. So since we want our objects to be very far away, we can essentially set our object distance equal to infinity. And so when you do that, you, you know, we should be taking a limit, right? A limit of 1 over p as p goes to infinity is going to give you 0. And so you can correct uh, nearsightedness by doing, you know, just 1 over i is equal to 1 over f. Now, the... Um, the I here that we'll plug in, ultimately, since we're correcting nearsightedness, this will be how far away the person can see. So in essence, we want to take objects which are infinitely far away, and we want to create an image of them 
that is at the location where the person can see. So this image will be your farthest distance that you can see. And um, ultimately, we do want to create a virtual image because we want the image to show up on the same side of the lenses as the object. If your glasses were creating an image on the opposite side, that wouldn't be very helpful, right? So I'm trying to create an image uh, on the side of you know, the object that I'm looking at. So I do want to have a negative sign on the image distance. Whoops. So we want a negative I, a negative image distance, and yeah, so, and that'll just be whatever far distance they give you, and then you'll, you'll solve for a focal length. Essentially, your focal length is going to be equal to, you know, the negative of the image distance, um, because your 1 over p goes to 0, and then uh, from that, you can determine if you want a converging or diverging lens. I won't spoil it, but keep in mind, uh, converging has a positive focal length, diverging, excuse me, has a negative focal length. And, um, oh, and then the one other thing is the power, which they actually will explicitly define for you. But the power of the lens in diopters, that's usually when you ask someone what their prescription is and they tell you those numbers, you're talking about the power of the lenses. And that's just one over the focal length. So you just, whatever focal length you get out of the uh, red equation here, you just plug in to find the power. And I'm going to try and make this like a different looking P than the object distance there. That's your power. And, uh, and yeah, the units will just come out in something called diopters. So your focal length, you always want to calculate all of these distances using meters. And uh, for the power, you'll end up getting them out in diopters. All right, and that's uh, that's sort of it. Uh, the, the chapter this week is, is sort of light on uh, conceptual stuff and equations and stuff. So go ahead and, and leave this one here. And um, I will see all of you later. Have a good one.